Hi, I'm James, and this is Amy. We spent the last year living and working in Scotland and exploring its incredible landscapes. But now we're embarking on our biggest adventure yet. We've quit our jobs to travel for a year, or at least until the money runs out. We're currently in New Zealand and have spent the last four weeks exploring the North Island from its geothermal wonders. Wow, that was some of the bluest water I've ever seen. To its stunning beaches. This beach is ridiculous. And have experienced living in a van for the first time. I managed to knock the key into the side panelling of the van. Join us as we discover the best that the North Island has to offer. This is why we quit our jobs to travel. We've made it to New Zealand. We're so excited to be here. This was the number one place on both of our lists. So we decided to make this our first stop on our travel year. Our plan is to spend three months traveling around the North and the South Islands and living out of a camper van. This is something we've always wanted to do. So I can't wait to get started. We had a rough plan, but to get around, we needed a van. Meet Old Gold. So this is gonna be our home for the next three months. This is what the van looks like in driving slash day mode. In the back, we've got this area here for storage. So in this side, we've got all of our food. And then on this side, we've got all our pots and pans, mugs and cutlery. And on the other side, we've also got this additional storage down here, which is where we keep our rucksacks and our camping supplies. And we've also got this cool box here, which is actually powered by the cigarette lighter in the van. So this stays cool, but only when we're driving. And this is how it looks with the bed down. As you can see, not a lot of space. After picking up our van in Auckland, we made a beeline for the coast. We've just picked up our camper van and parked up at a campsite in Takapuna, just outside of Auckland. Tonight is gonna be our first night sleeping in here and I'm really excited to see what it's like. And then tomorrow morning, we're up to go to Rangitoto Island, which is somewhere across the water over there. We could see it a bit earlier, but now it's all covered in mist. Good morning. We just woke up after our first night sleeping in the van and it was surprisingly comfortable in here last night. But the best thing about it is waking up to this view. So now we're gonna get packed up here, have our breakfast, and then we are heading off to Rangitoto Island. It's currently 7.30 and we've just left our campsite to walk to Devonport Ferry Terminal which will take us across to Rangitoto Island. It's really nice and sunny today but I'm looking across to the island and the clouds look very intimidating but hopefully that clears up by the time we get there. We boarded the boat at Devonport Ferry Terminal and began the 30 minute journey to Rangitoto Island. Rangitoto is the youngest and largest of Auckland's 53 volcanoes and the scenic hike up to its summit is a popular day trip from the city. As we approached the island, the clouds began to lift. We've just arrived on the island and all of the clouds that we saw above it have just moved over to where we started. So now it's really nice and sunny here. 
We're just about to start the summit track, which is about an hour to the top. This volcano last erupted only 600 years ago. So what we're walking through right now is the lava fields created when the volcano erupted. So all these piles of rocks down here is just lava. We've just reached the top of the track and now we're following this path around the rim of the volcano crater and we've got amazing views on both sides. On one side you can see right into the crater and then on the other we've got views out across the sea to Auckland. Beneath the surface of Rangitoto Island, there are tunnels and caves that were created by flowing lava. They formed when the outside of a lava flow cooled and hardened, whilst the inside remained molten and flowing, leaving behind these hollow tunnels. Our walk took us inside one of these lava tubes. The next day, we left Takapuna and made our way to the Coromandel Peninsula. Just two hours from the hustle and bustle of Auckland, the Coromandel is where many Kiwis go on holiday and is famed for its stunning, untouched beaches. We've arrived in the Coromandel Peninsula and it is hot. <laughs> it's only a couple of hours from Auckland, but it really feels like a different climate here. We're staying in a place called Hahe, and we're only about an hour walk from Cathedral Cove, which is one of the places we're gonna be visiting while we're here. Look at this beach. This is literally 100 meters from our campsite. And it's almost completely empty. Wow, this beach is ridiculous. The water is cold though. It kind of looks like Thailand. So you imagine the water to be really warm, but it's not, it's really cold. To walk just a hundred meters from our campsite to one of the nicest beaches I've ever been to. that has pretty much nobody on it. It's just ridiculous. 
This is why you hire a camper van in New Zealand to come to places like this. It's currently 7 a.m. and the reason we're up so early is the thing that we're about to do can only be done at certain times of day. So this is hot water beach and two hours either side of low tide you can access this area of beach where if you dig down into the sand you can reach these underground thermal vents. So if you dig a hole you can create your own hot pools on the beach. You can see the steam coming off and the bubbles under the sand. Apparently it can reach around 60 degrees. So when you create the pools you have to wash a bit of seawater into it to cool it down so that you can stand in it or sit in it. Later that day, we headed north from Harhe to another natural wonder, Cathedral Cove. This stunning stretch of beach is famous for the naturally formed rock archway that you can walk through at low tide. Leaving the Coromandel, we headed south towards Rotorua. But on our way, we made a short detour to a place I've always wanted to visit. Today we've come to the Hobbiton movie set where they filmed The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I've been a fan of The Lord of the Rings since I was a child, so today is a really exciting day for me. We did a guided tour of the set which includes 44 Hobbit homes, a real vegetable garden, and a replica of the Green Dragon Inn, where we enjoyed a locally brewed ginger beer. That was so much fun. As a Lord of the Rings fan, it was a really amazing experience getting to walk around a place that was so integral to my childhood. So if you are a fan like me, I highly recommend coming to Hobbiton. After leaving Hobbiton, we got back on the road and continued to our next destination. Welcome to Rotorua! <laughs> this whole place has such a strong eggy smell from all the sulphur. Rotorua is one of the most geothermally active regions of New Zealand. As well as its distinctive smell, its volcanic activity is also responsible for shaping its incredible landscape. After arriving in Rotorua, we made dinner and enjoyed a soak in our campsite's naturally heated hot pools. We're both very tired this morning because last night, just as we were about to lock up the van and go to bed, I managed to knock the key from its hanging place just up here. So that's where we've been hanging it. I managed to knock it off 
and it fell down into the side panelling of the van. And that gap, I'll just show you the gap. So, this is the gap down here, and that's only a couple of centimetres wide, so neither of our hands could fit down into it. So, <laughs> we had to fashion a device to fish it out. And this is what we ended up creating. A long hook made up of two knives plastered together and a bent spoon at the top as the hook. And we put that down the side and fished the key out. But it ended up taking us about an hour. <laughs> so we uh, didn't get to sleep until quite a bit later than we'd hoped. And all this was happening whilst it was pouring with rain outside. So I was standing here getting drenched. But thankfully, it's a nice sunny morning today. This is what we've been having for breakfast every morning. It's just rolled oats, dried dates, sunflower seeds, almonds, uh, sliced apple, and then just a little bit of maple syrup on top. Today we're having a bit of a geothermal tourist day. Our first stop is the Waimangu Volcanic Valley. Down there is Frying Pan Lake, and even from up here, you can hear the bubbling. Waimangu Valley was created in 1886, following the eruption of nearby volcano, Mount Tarawera. The eruption destroyed all life in the valley and buried it beneath 20 meters of mud and ash. Over the next 120 years, it was left to regenerate without human intervention, showing how quickly nature can recover after a devastating natural disaster. Wow, that was Inferno Crater, and that was some of the bluest water I've ever seen. And I can't believe that we have this place pretty much to ourselves. If you are coming to New Zealand, and you're passing through Rotorua, I definitely recommend checking out Waimangu Volcanic Valley because it seems to be relatively overlooked compared to the next place that we're going to. Before leaving Waimangu, we took a boat cruise out across Lake Rotomahana. At one time, this was the location of the eighth wonder of the world, the pink and white terraces. But the 1886 eruption of Mount Tarawera destroyed the terraces and flooded New Zealand's first tourist attraction beneath 60 metres of water. We've just left Waimangu and come out to the second stop on our geothermal tour. This is Waiu Tapu. Nowhere is Rotorua's volcanic activity more visible than Waiu Tapu. We spent the afternoon exploring the park's colourful hot springs, including the world-famous Champagne Pools. Formed 700 years ago, its spectacular colours are caused by a combination of different minerals and algae in the water. And while it may look like it's boiling, the bubbles are actually carbon dioxide and is the reason for its comparison to Champagne. genuinely haven't changed the colour. This really is the colour of this lake. It's like a high-vis green and it's really bright. I need to put my sunglasses on. After a few rainy days in Rotorua, we made our way to Taupo, a town on the shores of New Zealand's largest lake. Lake Taupo was created by the eruption of a supervolcano around 26,000 years ago. It remains the biggest volcanic eruption in the last 70,000 years. As well as its lake, Topor is also home to the most popular natural attraction in all of New Zealand. Welcome to Hooker Falls! Every year, almost a million people come to this short section of the Waikato River to witness this natural spectacle. 
As the river surges through this gorge, it narrows from 100 meters wide to just 15, creating these rushing rapids full of air bubbles. It's these air bubbles that give the falls its spectacular blue color, as well as its name, hooker, the Maori word for foam. We've now come further upriver to this point where the cool water from the river mixes in with the hot water from a thermal spring to create these hot pools that are the perfect temperature for bathing in, which is what we're going to do now. This water behind me is really warm. So we've had a slight change of plan. We've been in Topor for the last few days and originally our plan was to head south after this to Tongariro to hike the Tongariro Northern Circuit. However, the weather forecast is not looking great so it's unlikely that we'll be able to do the hike now. So instead of heading south to Tongariro, we're going to head northwest to Waitomo, then follow the west coast down to Taranaki and hopefully do the Tongariro crossing in January when the weather is better. It's a shame not to do it now as we were both really looking forward to it. But one thing that we're learning with longer term travel is the need to be flexible and to adapt. So with our plans changed, we set off for Waitomo. Next time, we continue our travels in the North Island. We explore Egmont National Park, make new friends on the side of a volcano, and discover an incredible black sand beach before making our way to Wellington where we'd be catching a ferry to the South Island.